How can you call yourself a warrior? Ha <laughs> ha! Well, at least you've made me laugh. Nobody told me this stuff was gonna be so heavy! <laughs> Everyone flee and scream! In that order! <laughs> Boy, am I glad to see you! Don't worry, you're safe now. You drive, I'll shoot. Marine, are you alright? Well, I've been better, but now I'm fine. I think you might have a concussion. Let's switch, and I'll- All good! Hello and welcome! Today, we're taking a look at the Halo Razorback Blitz set from Mega Constructs. We'll take a look at what you get, as well as the pros and cons of using it for stop motion. The set officially retails for $29.99, or about £23. But as usual, the prices vary depending on where you look. The figures for this set include a fully articulated white and gold Spartan. This colour scheme gives me major Iron Man space armour vibes. On the box, this Spartan is officially name dropped as Kelly from Blue Team, but sadly she doesn't have her Spartan number printed on her chest plate like the other members of Blue Team have had. But the Halo Heroes Series 16 version of her will have that detail, so that's worth keeping in mind. Despite Blue Team not appearing in Halo Infinite as of yet, Kelly's wearing the latest Gen 3 version of Mjolnir armour. The design seems to come straight out of the cover of the book Halo Shadows of Reach. Next up, there's a marine with all the features we've come to know and love. Have a look at my platoon pack review for more of a focus on this style of marine. This marine in particular seems to have legs that are quite curved, meaning it looks like he's got his legs spread wide. Not sure if this is just a production issue, or whether that's something consistent with this set. The helmet is removable and reveals a pretty generic head. Then there's a banished brute with purple armour. As usual, his helmet is removable, which is awesome, but does mean there's some give to it, as well as his torso armour. Also, this brute is trying his hardest to bring back the 90s shoulder pads. Lastly, but certainly not least, we have the one the only, Victor, the name the community has lovingly adopted for the Grunt Mule, after Simon from the Domain came up with the name. So Victor <laughs> is in the new Halo Infinite Series 3 blind bags for Mega Constructs, and I was actually lucky enough to be the first person to reveal this image to the world, so I made a big like meme out of it and we called him Victor the Grunt. And it's kind of exploded on the internet in our own little circle. I mean, we've got a new, we've got a Victor the Grunt Reddit, we've got a Victor the Grunt YouTube channel, we've got loads of different things, and we've all been getting in on the memes. The Grunt Mule comes with a backpack piece that can fit up to three weapons. The set comes with a grey battle rifle, a grey reach style shotgun, a red plasma launcher, a red plasma pistol, two red shock rifles, and a red spike grenade which is made from a rubbery flexible material. There's four green bases for the figures, and a brick separator. This is the Razorback, a vehicle unique to Halo Infinite. It's basically the troop variant of the Warthog from the other games, but 343 decided to make it a separate vehicle for Infinite. In the lore, the Razorback is pretty much a Warthog chassis, but with added armour, and saw more widespread use with colonists. With this being the case, 
it's only fitting that building the chassis of this model is almost the exact same as building the recent Infinite Warthog. The suspension is the same, with a rubber band mechanism for realistic suspension. There's two seats up front, with some nice detailing like a parking brake, and displays with pre-printed screens on them. There's a new windshield mould which just about lets you see where you're going. And the front has a big thick bumper for politely relocating wandering aliens. <coughs> when it comes to the rear of the Razorback, visually I think the troop bay looks very good, with that custom built bar going down the middle. Whether you prefer it to the old custom piece that the troop hogs used to have on their back is up to you. But personally, I think it's slightly disappointing that although you can fit about four figures in the back, they've got nothing to hold on to unless you make them all grip the central bar. And they're really delicate and fiddly to make sit down without... It's also quite sad that there isn't a way to clip weapons onto the back like you can in the game. That would have made for a great feature for the vehicle to differentiate it from warthogs. I thought about using the front hooks from a warthog and stuck them under the back of the Razorback. Now it can carry a grav hammer like in the game. Doesn't look perfect, but it's a shame that something like this wasn't included in the build. And I'm sure you guys can come up with other ways of adding this feature as well. Other than that, I really like the way this vehicle looks, and the colour of the pieces still tie it to being UNSC without looking like your average green warthog. This set has an alternate build, part of which lets you build a wall fortification and a turret. The wall has some nice details and the implication of some little moving turrets, and it's the size of a figure so it works well. Now the turret I really like. It feels like it's straight out of Halo Wars, and you know I love my lore accurate alternate builds. And for so few pieces it has a really nice look to it. The other part of the alternate build is this little exoskeleton for the brute. This looks weird. I appreciate that they managed to design something to actually fit around a figure and still allow it to move, but it's pretty out there as far as looks go. Overall, this set comes with a nice vehicle and some decent figures. I feel like a lot of people are going to want this mainly for Kelly and the Mule Grunt. Some people brought up that they weren't quite keen on the bright red weapons because they look a bit too plasticky, and they definitely stand out more than the other weapons typically do. So it depends on what you're after. Personally, I like the way they contrast with the figures, but only because I've got a fair few of these weapons in their normal colours already. I wouldn't say it's worth getting another of this set for the alternate build, but I do really like the turret. So what do you think? If there's anything you think I've missed, please let me and everyone else know in the comments. Before a new review goes up, I'll make a YouTube community post showing which set I'll be reviewing next, so please keep a lookout for those as I'd love to hear and feature your feedback. Thanks for watching and take care.